So in my ventures to try other video games, I decided that if I wanted to get into the mindset of a survival crafting game in preparation for Dune Awakening, I should probably start here. And I started with a game called Enshrouded, an absolutely stunning medieval survival crafting RPG. It has become a near obsession for me to play and explore, but the best part of the game is not really what you would think. Now I'll be the first to admit that I haven't put hundreds of hours into the game, but what experience I have had is absolutely incredible. And here's what happened. First, I decided to pick up Entrouded because it looked like it was going to be a lot of fun. Lots of good reviews amongst other things. We get to the character creation screen and I just have to say, is, is it just me or does this guy feel like incredibly short? <laughs> Like, all of them feel like they're actually my height. Like, that good, you know, short king size. <clears throat> well, the most interesting bit in this entire character creation was the fact that you can mix and match male bodies with female voices and vice versa. I cracked up for like 10 minutes of this <laughs> because I could have chosen one of the female voices, which, oddly enough, during the attacks, they sound like Link from Legend of Zelda. It's <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah. Well... I start a private game as I'd like to get a good feel for Enshrouded before I get involved with other players. We get a cutscene starting out talking about the elixir, which caused people to become powerful and addicted. You wouldn't want to drink out of a random bottle from a stranger that you just met. Well, people go crazy digging wells to find more of these elixirs, but they dig too deep and release the shroud, a cursed fog that spreads like the plague. They forge Flameborn, which is us, who will save the world, but we have to be basically put into a time capsule and there you go. I emerge out of my container, luckily still wearing pants and I get to see the UI and screen settings. Amazingly crisp and, and easy to understand and straightforward. I love crisp UIs. I don't like a whole bunch of stuff being thrown in front of me. I like to be able to focus on just what I need to, keep it minimalistic. It, it, it helps me out with the game so much better. And then I press the space bar to see what the jump capability is, and it really makes no damn sense. Like, how the hell can this four foot man have a five foot vertical? Incredible. We step outside to see the open world. Like, look how huge this place is. It is incredible. It's actually very reminiscent to the opening of Elden Ring, which was just breathtaking. I mean, right off the gate, I'm in love because I love being able to explore and do things on my own. Now, to be sure, there's a journal that kind of tells me the next steps in my adventure, which is fine, but I, I like being given the choice of where I want to go. I don't necessarily have to follow the journal. I can just go and explore and do what I need to, but there is a story to be followed. I jump into this cave and find some bombs and torches and a hatchet too. We dive feet first into this deadly shroud. You know the shroud that's killing everyone? Totally raw dog in it here. I'm not even wearing a mask. Daddy, chill. And I'll be honest with you, you're just lucky that my character has pants. We have our first introduction to enemies and tab targeting. The combat start feels smooth, although I do have some trouble targeting multiple enemies uh, with the tab. And as I focus on one, the other one can just sidestep me completely and attack. From the rear <laughs> this is something that i will talk later in the video of uh it was really one of my own main sticking points of the game that i didn't necessarily enjoy but i found a way around it i level up here too and i get a quick look at the skill tree and it appears that there's tons of like classes that you can lean towards however you don't necessarily have to fully commit to that there's lots of custom builds being able to be built as is tradition i have to do a melee of some sort because why not I pick up Merciless Attack, which basically is a mega hit if this target is stunned. Now, it also appears that underneath their health, there is a stun bar, which if the stun bar fills up all the way, they get stunned. And then you can use Merciless Attack. So I pick up enough stone to build a Flame Altar, which is basically like our home base for me. Entrouded offers an apparently diverse building system with tons of versatility. Without knowing, I just start building with what I think would look good. I place around 600 bricks individually, and then I realize that I can just get a construction hammer or mason hammer and build an entire wall in one click. I wasted about 45 minutes just building this little house brick by brick because I, I didn't read. Um, anyway, don't suffer like me. I finished my makeshift fort and realized that I have a new quest. Time to go into the shroud and find the sleeping survivor. Before I move on, I have to say how damn addicting the building system is in this game. Like, I can honestly just build my own base and 
go from there if I wanted and completely forget about the, the RPG elements about this. Just focus on my build. I just want to build a cool house. And, and it's actually not even that difficult. It's very intuitive. I dive into the first section of the shroud and I'm exploring about and my bar starts ticking down, just indicating when I will need to move out. I gather some of the resources down here uh, and I don't notice until later that these resources are specific to the shroud and I will need specific things from within the shroud to craft other things down the road. Pretty cool. Well, I venture into this red shroud area and my bar ticks down so damn fast by that by the time that I react, I die. Literally my first time in the shroud and I die to the deadly shroud. <laughs> Pro gamer here. Well, I venture to gather my corpse and the items that are on it and luckily it keeps it right outside the deadly shroud. So I, I needn't worry about rushing in there and trying to grab them and dying again. They're placed just outside so I can gather them and move on. I venture into the nearby elixir well to see what it's all about, and I charge an entire group of mobs. I panic so much that I actually command sit while I'm <laughs> fighting. Press the C button because I panicked. I was fat fingering them. I get finished off by the last guy. Now I have to run back like the shoeless hobbit that I am. I die again, but this time's from falling. And now I'm regretting most of the decisions that I've made in my character's life. What is good to note is that your corpses are basically there ready to be picked up as long as you can get back to them. I realize also my goal isn't to go into the shroud per se, but I was supposed to go to get the survivor on the other side. Focus caffeinated. I get to this vault that has a bunch of humanish characters i mean they seem more human than the mobs from the last of us but uh I, i'm not quite sure with that they all wear masks and grunt who knows they could just be really into heavy metal well somehow i am on death's door with zero hp fighting these guys but the combat system i i have almost to a science now at least uh, i think the combat feels very much like elden ring Many times I'm dodging away or blocking attacks as I am bringing down enemies. It adds such a cool element of rather than just smacking and attacking while you are moving through enemies and really no heated defenses, I have to be mindful of when the attacks are coming in from the enemies, dodge out of the way, let them finish their combo, and then get in one two hits before I die. <laughs> and this is this is really cool and something that I, I noted throughout most of my playthrough here in Entrouded. Like, it really felt like I was having to dip in and out of combat. It felt more fluid. So that that's something that's really, really cool. Um, I bust this vault, and I get the blacksmith. Now I have to summon him at my home base. Oswald, which this dude is just, like, straight jacked. Like, I'm, I'm calling it like it is. This dude never misses a, a gym workout. He has, like, 10 quests for me, like, right out the gate. But I do craft a nice cudgel for my use, which is pretty good in my mind. My next quest takes me to the elixir well to stop the spread, and I swear it is just like the fungus from The Last of Us. Like, just saying what it is, it's ex it's almost identical, it feels like. <laughs> we get this resurrect shrine up at the top, so we dive down deep to find the fell Thunderbrute, a big boy with big boy slams and heavy hitting attacks. He starts smacking me around like I am a ragdoll, and I feverishly try to ca craft a bandage mid-fight. Well, I get smacked, but luckily I res at the top of the tower, and back in we go. I do realize actually on my descent down that I was trying to use a ball of string instead of a bandage. I didn't have any bandages on me. I was trying to spam the bandage while I was being attacked. Oh, I'm so good at this game. <clears throat> well, I fight this guy a couple more times, and I die quite a few in stupid fashion, but eventually I get him down, and with a surgeon's precision, I destroy the shroud root and clear the affected area i also gather up like my 20 dead bodies and all the the loot that went with it i come back and i find myself building my base a bit again and and like this is something that is a repeating occurrence is that every time i come back to my base i just make it a little bit bigger I change things around and make it a little bit bigger a little bit bigger and I, I completely fail to realize that my next target is actually getting my grappling hook and my glider, which some of this was highlighted in the trailers and other people's playthroughs. So I'm very interested to see how the movement is in this game. Feels as if it's like a weighted movement or perhaps the it feels natural, I guess is what I'm looking for. Well, first I need to go out and gather specific materials to make this happen. So here we go. After getting the, the said materials, I make my grappling hook. I move on across the Braylon Bridge, which is actually really smooth now that I have the grappling hook, so I don't have to go through the shroud. 
Um, and I'm able to cross these distances fairly smooth, very, very straightforward. You just press a button and you just time it appropriately. Nice. I progress to the spire, which I have to find a way to get to the top. And But what's really cool about this spire is that it's like a mini dungeon with puzzles and everything. I actually feel like I have to figure out what to do next, what buttons am I missing, and explore within. It's not just about fighting bosses and killing mobs and doing all that. It's solving riddles. Like, it, it has, like, a little bit of a Legend of Zelda vibe right here. Anyone? Just me? After some mild attrition, we reached the top of the altar, and now it is time to upgrade my base because at the top of the spire was another flame. I am then told I need to go get the next survivor, a hunter of renown, so let's go. I realize that I haven't really put too much uh, of the talent points into my skill tree, and I start fixing that because I want to have a melee with a blunt weapon. Specifically, I'm aiming for that two-handed hammer. I decide to head down the warrior barbarian's path with the skill points that I have. But I may dip into the athlete because there is one that is like a double jump, which is pretty cool. I explore a bit into the nearby shroud, specifically heading to the bottom of this elixir well. Now that I have a good idea of what I need to do when I get there, Thanks to my previous experience, I basically clear house very easy. It, it really did not take any time at all. I one shot everything. The mobs here did hit pretty hard, to be sure, but I've upgraded my armor a little bit. I've been able to handle most of these mobs after getting smacked around. And uh, ironically, though, even though I'm going down the melee route, I, I've been getting a bunch of legendary and rare bows. <laughs> I mean, I should probably keep the bow on me and then just have some arrows ready to use in case I need to hit targets at a long distance, but I mean, that probably can't hurt, right? I make my way over to the Hunter's Vault to unlock them, but now I have a calm mastery to the game, a certain focus. I gather berries and use them for passive health regeneration while in combat and a health potion along with a bandage just to make sure that I have extra flavors of healing. I don't know what I'm going to be dealing with, but I'm going to be prepared for it. I walk into this vault area to find some type of weird monkey yeti man. I, I, like, I'm not sure what the hell this guy is, but he's ready to throw hands, so I return in kind. Pretty easy, actually. The staff wielding monkey man actually just stares at me. We have this weird interaction where we're just looking at each other for a couple of seconds. Uh, he doesn't really do anything until I run away, and then he starts slamming and getting all ma mad. But we basically, it's a, it's a, it's a throw down, stare down <laughs> kind of thing. I find the hunter, and I think this is a decent point for me to say I have an okay grasp, a good grasp on the game, and seeing how it plays. Okay, so let's talk about Enshrouded. What I'd like to focus on is what the game does right and other areas that I don't think that it could, it was the best and probably could be improved on. First things first, I loved this game's combat, its building, and its exploration right out the gate. Fantastic. The combat is really incredibly well done, kind of ignoring some of the issues that I have with the tab targeting, but managing your stamina bar, your enemy attack combos, and of course your ability to dodge in and out and weapon swapping. I mean, being able to use all the different weapons while in combat was great. Each one of the weapons felt like it had a strong suit that flowed with it. Swords are good at piercing, maces are good at blunt damage, axes are good at slashing, like it all made sense. And it really added a level of diversity that I really love. And each hit on the enemy gave you a bit of an idea of how effective it was and what wasn't. This really looks like a good layer of instant feedback on the damage that you were dealing. So very, very well done. I think that's something that is really good about this game and it feels intuitive. The exploration aspect of the game is untouched. Literally, it is some of the best that I've seen in an open world game. Not since like Elden Ring have I seen something so robust and meaningful, just going out there, seeing what's out there. You're exploring this entire decimated world full of shacks and homes and other various buildings just to figure out what happened and what you can survive on. Then while exploring these areas, you are encountering wild men, beasts, shroud fungal monsters. I mean, it's just incredible. The building aspect, I truly love. I could see myself just spending tons and tons of time just building a house or other buildings, not even playing the RPG aspect of the game, just gathering the materials and go from there. And one thing I will say is that gathering the materials seemed very easy to craft the required components for your building pieces. Like I had a couple dozen stone and somehow that equaled to 2000 brick blocks. Like, so we weren't really limited in the in that area, but what it really falls down to is how much space you have around your flame altar zone 
and how creative your fluids are feeling that day. That was kind of a cringy line. One thing that I felt was somewhat quote unquote mandatory was actually the building of the homes. Like, yeah, you had to lay down a flame altar that's part of the journal, but you could literally just have a shack or a tent, or even if you cared to, the Taj Mahal, and it really didn't seem to matter. The quality of your home never really seemed to matter. Now again, this could just be an early on problem, and the building aspect could actually be super important later. Uh, that's something that I'll have to find out on my own. In my experience, I didn't even really sleep in the bed that I created. I was only using the crafting table or the blacksmith himself. Now again, this is just in my experience, but the game does kind of promote this building aspect as, a, you know, oh, it's something cool that it can do, but does it have an influential tie to the story? Does it have a meaningful tie to the story? Some areas of the game that were cool but it, it didn't really feel super involved or that I actually found were the shrouds now this is a unique draw for me to go into them and check them out and fight the baddies and move on I kind of felt like they were rinse and repeat now as I play more I'm sure that this is going to evolve and become more engaging gameplay different beasties bigger bosses and a huger emphasis on these areas however I do think that it would have been more engaging if we had less time to hang out in the shroud before we died, like two minutes or less. And as we level up, we gain more resistance as to the shroud as we go to be able to last longer. Five minutes, while not seeming like a long amount of time, is plenty of time for me to really not even see it as a serious concern. Like there was times where I wasn't even really paying attention and it's like, oh, I still had a minute and a half left. Like I feel it would have been a lot more engaging in the survival aspect if that were the case, if it was more serious for us to be within the shroud. The only time the shroud really did whoop my butt was uh, when we hit the deadly shroud, and I do see the much more intensive timer there, and I'm sure that there's going to be a way that we handle it down the road, but the initial experiences in a survival crafting game, or one that's hinted as survival crafting game, and especially with the shroud being the main component, I would have expected it to be a lot more serious. A few critiques that I have with the game, and, and of course they're just minor in my opinion, but worth mentioning, really fell down to the tab targeting and actually with the building. So the tab targeting was one of the, the major concern that I had, especially when I was handling multiple groups of enemies. Now again, I'm playing solo, I'm playing by myself, so when I lean in to attack an enemy and then I go to repost or put up my shield or do something to uh, parry the next coming attack that's off, off of one of the mobs that I'm not targeting, the tab target makes it really difficult to make the directional changes that I needed. When I'm taking on groups of enemies, the best way that I found to handle it is to actually just put up my shield, not tab target and focus on one enemy and then just attack in an area and put up my shield as I'm dodging through. That was more successful than just tab targeting one enemy, dodging in and then trying to tab to block to the right or to the left because it never really felt like it was clicking the one that I needed it to. Now again, this only resulted in like one death before I picked up how my flow and how the combat was, but it's still worth mentioning. Now talking about the buildings, the second critique that I have is really when I was trying to place sheets with the mason hammer or even the individual blocks. They just it had to be positioned just right for it to fit smoothly. Now, I do know that there's the option that you can press like control scroll wheel to move them further or further or closer. But many times I had to place this, replace the same piece four or five times before it stuck. And this was just a mild inconvenience, and this could just be me being hurt. Overall, the game is in a fantastic state right now. There is so much more of this game yet explored that I have not even touched. Now to say, I've put in a handful of hours, but I only want to log in and just explore more. The game really does offer a bit of everything for everyone, and for it being my first survival crafting game, I'm certainly surprised at how well I did and how addicting and shrouded can be. Definitely a game that I'm going to be coming back to. I am keeping tabs on the latest news on Dune Awakening, a survival crafting MMO based in the Dune universe. If you want to see the latest updates of the game, you can check it out here. Otherwise, stay caffeinated, folks.